thewellnesscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. Welcome to 100 Not Out, featuring your hosts, Dr. Damien Christoph and Marcus Pierce. And I'm here with the hero of hormones. He is Dr. Damien Christoph. How are you, legend? Hey, Marcus. Fancy being the hero of hormones. Being well, the king, the prince, now the hero. You are the I hero. Love it. Love and it. Um, love and it. Thanks, on, mate. My, my pleasure. On this very special edition it's of awesome. 100 Not Out, we are going to cross over to not the king, not the prince, not the pharaoh. I'm going to call him the godfather. <laughs> of hormones, uh, I, love I love it. Look at the way he's sitting in that chair. He looks uh, like the Godfather. He is, he is the. He is the. God, he is the. God, he is the. God, he is the, God, he is the most incredible health professionals in the world. In fact, the Todd family, full stop, Seriously. have created such an incredible legacy and influence over so many human lives. Um, hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. And uh, I am excited. People may have heard Wayne Todd on the Wellness Guys, but I'm excited to have Wayne Todd. Here on 100 Not Out. He is the author of the SD Protocol. He's an incredible chiropractor. He is the founder of the Todd Wellness Group. He is Dr. Wayne Todd, joining us from Gippsland, Victoria. Dr. Wayne Todd, welcome to 100 Not Out. Hey, Marcus. Damien. Wayne, it's really great to have you here with us. Um, we'll take a different spin on things from the wellness guys. Uh, th- this is heaps more fun. Um, so, <laughs> not let the boys tell that you I said that. You're calling the wellness guys boring? No, nah, no, no, definitely not boring. We're just more fun. This is just more fun. We have lots of laughs. Yeah. Lots well, I've laughs. got a ton of questions. Good. I've got a ton of questions for you because I have been wanting to do this. Do you know, in, in a former life, right. Wayne and I did a webinar together. And I got to ask him a number of things about the SD protocol or sympathetic dominance. And I asked him all these great questions, but I've never been able to do it with Wayne on 100 Not Out and ask questions. I'm talking man boobs, I'm talking chicken wings, I'm talking all types of things, <laughs> which only Wayne can answer. Only Wayne has, is that what you're going to say? <laughs> <laughs> the chicken wings, yeah, the chicken wings, all good. Uh, no, he's got some incredible insights that we've never really discussed in this nature on 100 Not Out. Go well, out. Let's fire away. So yeah, I'm going to ask. I'm, I'm going to ask the, the questions that like a typical patient would probably ask. Okay. And then you, being far more older and wiser than I am, <laughs> can ask the health professional questions. He's one with the compliments today, isn't he? All right. Okay. How's that? What Off do you reckon? Goes. Off so goes. I'm going to get straight into this because the, the sympathetic, sympathetic dominance protocol, the SD protocol, is as a as a layman, as a punter, it's it's incredibly complex for someone like me who's very interested in health to get their head around. But when you talk about the examples that people experience in real life and link it all back in the way that you do, I begin to see all of these dots join. And so before I ask you about man boobs and chicken wings, can you tell us and our listeners how you started joining all of the dots with all of your years of clinical experience? How did this SD protocol come about? Well, yeah, good question, Marcus. I guess it really um, comes through just researching cases, individual cases that I have present to me. I'm thinking, what the heck is going on with this person and how did that happen? And, you know, being in practice for 30 years, you see common themes, common trends, and you see this happened in other people and what caused that and what was going on and and doing some work in, you know, doing a two-year functional neurology uh, program training, looking at how the nervous system works in a lot more detail and, and working out the, the complexity of it really made me understand that it's actually quite simple. Um, the whole body, it, it's actually really quite simply put together. It's not rocket science and you can look at each area of the body very specifically and, and think it's really quite complex, but it actually isn't. You know, you know, from a that autonomic nervous system perspective, which is that part of our nervous system that controls everything that happens that we don't have to think about, which is 90% of what actually goes on in our body. And that just happens as a reflex. It's just happening automatically. And we would think we don't have control of that, but we actually do. We actually do. And, and the simplistic rule is if you're running from a lion, you not, don't need to be feeding or reproducing or healing anything. So those systems shut down. And that's that's pretty pretty normal when you are if you think about a, a gazelle getting chased down by a by a, a cheetah, not really thinking about digesting its meal and it's not really thinking about reproducing. 
at that point in time or healing a wound. It's thinking about running. And when that gets stuck on and locked on in the human body, the whole cascade of events takes place and it's all interconnected with all our various systems, our digestive system, hormonal system, nervous system, posture, physical being. All our systems have fallout effects. Ask your question. Okay, I've got to ask you this. So, if are you saying that we are running from tigers, but we're eating when we shouldn't be eating? No, and that's I'm causing our problems. Well, I'm saying our digestive system is not working particularly well. If we're running from a tiger, our digestive system doesn't really need to be working. So. Our vascular reserves or our blood flow is not directed to our gut. It's directed to our muscles so we can run. So over a long period of time, our gut blood flow is reduced. So our intestinal membrane just starts to not work so well. It just becomes a bit semi-porous and it starts leaking partially digested foods into our bloodstream, waste products, toxins start leaking into our our circulatory system, which causes a flow-on havoc effect. Well, but interesting around that, and which I really love, Wayne, is that um, it's important to understand that where you're heading with this is that a fright is a fright is a fright, okay? And then and you should be able to get over that. A stressful yes. event is something that happens. Like we, we stress happens, right? Mm-hmm. And so we should be able to just get over it. But what you're saying is that we're stuck in stress, and as a result yes. of being stuck in stress, we're stuck continuously running away from that cheetah or yes. continuously running away from our boss yes. or continually waking up next to the same person every single day. No, I'm joking about that one. No, no you should. No, but that's serious. No, but that, you know, some people stress ab- people. Yes. Yeah, absolutely serious. And, and yeah. can I just give one example? And, you know, being in practice for 30 years, I see examples every day, but this one's a fresh one, a fresh example, someone that I just started seeing one month ago. Okay, fresh. So this, like this lady is 29. Yep. She presented, so she started reading the book and she made an appointment and came and she says, oh my goodness, this is me, this is me, I've got all these health problems, I'm so anxious all the time, I'm wound up all the time, I just, I don't know what to do and I've been put on antidepressants, I've had two stomach ulcers, I've had stomach surgery, I've got all these digestive issues, significant hormonal imbalances. And so we started going through and she put the whole protocol into place and started doing home routines and getting her gut sorted out. I saw her for a couple of weeks in the practice. I was on holidays for a couple of weeks. My son, who's a chiropractor, was looking after her for that time. I came back to practice last week. So she'd been doing the stuff for a month. I walked in the room and I said, oh, my God, look at you. You look amazing. And she she had color, vibrance and color in her eyes and she looked totally different. She said, I'm the best I've been in years. I can't tell you how good I feel. And uh, she said, but, you know, yesterday I was feeling a bit down and, you know, but I've been generally so much better. And I said, you know, it's not going to be a linear improvement. You'll improve bit by bit and you might have days up and down. And I said, but I get a, a, a second sense there's something else going on that's holding you up from getting well. I don't know what it is, but you haven't told me something. I don't know what it is. And she said, could it be a shit marriage? I said, yeah, it could be. Tell me about that shit marriage. And she's 29. She said, I said, how long has it been shit for? She said, 10 years. So I said, you got married when you were 19. Yes. I said, so tell me, what happened when you walked down the aisle? Was it the best thing, best day of your life? Is that all you saw? She said, no. Nah. All my friends and family told me not to do it. And all I saw was all my friends and family sitting in the audience in the, in the church when I walked down the aisle and I didn't see my husband. And she said, from that day to now, he's mean, vindictive, he's manipulative, he's this, he's this, he's that. And, uh, and they've got two kids. And I said... So can you see it ever working? She said, no. I said, can, I said, do you love this man and do you want to make it work? She said, no. And I said, so every day you're in that constant stress of trying to keep the peace and you hate your life. She said, yes. I said, there's your kicker. That's your major stress. So that lady is in constant stress every minute of every day. So I said, all this other stuff that you're doing that's made you really well within a short period of time is all Band-Aids. It's all Band-Aids. And you're playing with a bloody razor blade. Yeah, totally. You've got to get rid of the razor blade, otherwise you'll never heal. You'll never be well. No amount of sauerkraut, no amount of green juices, no amount of meditation, no amount of chiropractic, no amount of anything can get rid of that subluxation but, that's yeah, a massive but, subluxation to life but hey in a month it made a huge impact it changed yeah. it, but it's not going it's not going to be sustainable it's probably going to be ongoing that revealed like by cleaning all the other stuff up you're able to get to like the yeah. real yes. problem right yeah. and so yes. that's 
that's a great thing. You know, that's part of what chiropractic is able to do is to be able to like pull through, get through the all the stuff and then go, mm. that's the, th- that's the uh-huh. cause of the stuff that's going on. So I love that. Good on you, Wayne. Yeah, How- good story. This isn't, a, this isn't, you know, from our, our conversations over the years, Wayne, you're not alone though. This isn't an isolated case in peeling the layers back and then having the really hard conversation that a lot of health practitioners aren't willing to have with their patients and go, you know what, I can adjust you and we can do that and you can yep. eat this and do that. Yep. But if you've got a shit marriage, yep. there's only going to be so much that we can do. That takes guts and courage from the health practitioner to be able to do it. And so do you know the way I framed that up to her? No. I, I said, you know, I'm not a psychologist and I'm not a marriage counsellor. I'll tell you that straight up. And I said, absolute best solution for your two kids, your husband and yourself will be to get this to work. So you can live happy lives if you can truly do that. Yeah. And if you truly can't, then you need to get out of it, sort it out, do whatever you need to do. And she said, oh, yes, uh, can you just write down for me? I'm taking magnesium and withania and, I've, you know, they've got to get that in test of mine. Can you write that down and how much should I take of that? So I wrote that down. I said, there's one other thing that you need as well, and that's you need a can of piss the bastard off. <laughs> Did she say, where do I buy that from? <laughs> uh, yeah, she started smart. You should have seen her face light up. She said, you're absolutely right. And I said, and that's the most important supplement that you need. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Wow. That's you know, really cool. and, but you've got to preface that up. The last thing I want to do is break a family up. Yeah, absolutely. The most important thing would be to keep that family unit together if it's going to work for everybody. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, I, I always start to feel really guilty now with writing this book because I have so many people that now come in and go, thank you so much for writing that. And I go, why? They go, I've left my husband or I've quit my, I've quit I've my, quit my job, my job. I've quit my job <laughs> and right. I feel amazing. And I go, well, I didn't mean that to happen. They go, no, you've, <laughs> you've revealed to me what the actual main problem of my health issues are. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Well, this yeah. is the freak out that I know Lawrence Tam talks about. People go, oh, the wellness guys have changed my life. I quit my job. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but like you say, Wayne, this is, it, well, there's only so much. We can all do the eating or the, or the changing other habits. But if there's yeah. something else that's there on a constant daily basis, uh, that's the biggest driver to change. Absolutely. That constant niggle in the background, that stress is ongoing, yeah. that emotional stress. Could be physical stress on laptops and iPhones, and it could be chemical stress out gut. But you got to work out what the biggest key to that person's door is, what their big razor blade is that they're yep. playing with. Absolutely. Um, so I've got to. Can I get into man boobs and chicken wings? Yeah, go on. Ask about it. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, I'm fascinated. I mean, I'm not fascinated with man boobs, but I'm fascinated that people's bodies respond in a particular way. That there's different parts of the body that will blow out. Yeah, at different times and so, for different reasons. I, I just remember a conversation we had about this, and I don't remember all the bits of it, but I remember you talking about. When, when it, let's use man boobs as an example, a lot of people see man boobs as just another part of aging. Like it's what happens as you get older. And I know there's teenagers out there with man boobs, but a lot of men as they get older think that, you know, they just, they lose that muscle mm. and there's not much that they can do about it. And a lot of women think that, I they think they're called the chicken robots. wings. You know, yeah, they do need the robots, but they think this is just a normal part of aging. And mm. I remember you saying, Wayne, that that's anything but, it's not normal. Um, no, no, exactly, exactly. You know, testosterone, which is our main main hormone for driver of muscle strength and stamina, and um, our drive in a male, is consu- we we can't produce testosterone if we're spending all our time producing cortisol. Mm. So when we're under states of stress, it's a in the part of that pregnenolone steel pathway, or we call it the cortisol steel pathway. To produce cortisol, our primary stress, stress hormone, we produce that from cholesterol. And if we are under states of constant, we also, to produce testosterone, we need cholesterol. But cortisol takes it in preference because we're under stress. So we don't have enough cholesterol left to produce the testosterone that we need that will give us muscle, bulk, drive, strength, stamina. Mm. On that count, statin uh, statin drugs or cholesterol-lowering medication interrupts that pathway way before our testosterone is produced. So if we're on statin drugs, it's a double whammy and we're under stress, we're not going to have the underlying building blocks to make the hormones to enable us to keep our muscle bulk and muscle tone and give us drive, strength and stamina. Mm. So there's so many different factors, but it, but stress is a huge one. That that cortisol steel pathway it takes all the cortisol, the cholesterol that we can produce, and 75% of the cholesterol that we produce, we have in our body is produced in our liver. Only 25% from diet. That's, that's a really produ- important thing to talk about, actually, because a lot of people are scared of eating eggs, right? And, yes. Uh, because they've got cholesterol in it, and uh, and so they're worried about um, eating cholesterol. But it's a really important thing to understand is only about 30% of the cholesterol that you consume is absorbed, 
right? So that's not, and, and Wayne just said 25%. So it's such a small amount. And then it's only such a small fraction of the cholesterol that's actually circulating through your body. Like 25% of the cholesterol circulating through your body came from, from diet food. in the first place. The rest is manufactured in response to life. You've got to make yes. it. You're making it from your foods that you eat. Your liver's manufacturing it for you. And what you don't manufacture or what you don't eat, you manufacture. And quite often, if you're under pressure, if you're eating you know, poorly, you're going to manufacture poor quality cholesterol. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what a lot of people don't know about their brain as well, 25% of your brain's mass is cholesterol. Wow. Well, and and it's there as, you're making as, your brain as, as suspensory cells for the, our neurons to bind to, for our brain cells to bind to. So if we start taking um, cholesterol-lowering medication, we start actually causing early brain shrinkage, brain atrophy, memory loss, Alzheimer's dementia, because we're actually getting rid of too much cholesterol and we, our neurons haven't got enough lot to bind to, so our brain starts shrinking. Wayne, that's massive. Is that true? No, I just made it up. <laughs> that's amazing. No, I, no, I didn't say mean it again. I didn't, no, hold on, say it again because I was looking at something else over here. I didn't here mean about... to be dismissive, but that, that's, an, that's an incredible thing that if 25% of our brain mass is made of cholesterol and, we're, and, and statin drugs are the number one or maybe the number two most prescribed drug in the country, in Australia... And that's actually causing premature atrophy of the brain. Why the hell are we still doing that? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Seriously, right? Where's the evidence Seriously. base for that? Mm. Bloody idiots. Okay, well, that's incredible. All right, so... I've just, I've just now got a charge on something. You do, you do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, Wayne, in, in your book, The SD Protocol, there are so many uh, symptoms that you kind of really just... You don't quash, you actually explain and, and connect the dots for people. And like you said at the beginning of this interview, that you simplify. So I'm going to recommend for everyone to either buy the book, uh, SD Protocol, or go to sdprotocol.com.au and find out more about what it is that we're talking about here. But you have a number of free ebooks on the site as well. And I want to just go through a number of these just so that people can get an understanding of the links that you're talking about. And the first one is anxiety and depression. With everything that we've spoken about now, how can we go from man boobs and the liver to anxiety and depression? Can you explain that for us, please? Yeah, I'll explain it simply. Would you like that? Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So if our body's primed and waiting for attack, we're in sympathetic drive, we're on edge the whole time. Every single cell in our body physiologically is waiting for attack. Mm. But attack doesn't happen. You're not being attacked, but you're waiting and it's waiting, it's not happening, waiting, it's not happening. After a while, you become a bit anxious. Wow. Physiologically anxious. Mm. Every cell is waiting for the attack, it's not happening. So when you become anxious, our rational brain goes, Why am I thinking like this? So you become a bit depressed. So you go through cycles of anxiety and depression associated with that chronic sympathetic drive. People don't sleep well. They're light sleepers. They're vivid dreamers. You know, how many, how many guys here have their wives nudging them all the time? Did you hear that? What? There's someone downstairs. Someone came in the door. They're like, did you hear that noise? The kid snorted. Did you hear that? Because they're, they're, you know, they're on edge. You know, they're, they're whole, they're wired, wired, wired. What, listening, that sound and visual perception is just waiting for attack. But it's not happening. What about because headaches? Simply, what about headaches? What about headaches? Absolutely. Where do you want to start? You know, when someone's in that sympathetic drive mode, their shoulders are pulled forward, their heads drop forward, so they've got a forward head posture. That forward head posture puts significantly greater load on the muscles at the back of their neck and upper back area. So that for every centimetre the head moves forward of that centre shoulder line, the head weighs another four kilos of load on the muscles in the back of the neck. So someone with forward head posture who is sympathetically dominant, their headaches will get worse as the day progresses, gravity-driven, those muscles fatigue. Yep, and so when they lie down, their headaches go away. So that will be posturally driven headaches associated with that sympathetic wind-up. But then when someone, you can also get hormonally driven headaches. When someone's running from a line, they don't need to be falling pregnant, so they don't ovulate it regularly. They might ovulate every second or third or fourth cycle. When they don't ovulate, they don't produce progesterone. So then their estrogen levels will rise. Estrogen is one of the known common hormonal triggers for migraines, which happens at a cyclical time, premenstrually and often ovulation time. When they get that estrogen spike, boom, they'll get a migraineous headache. But it's because they're running from a line and don't need to be falling pregnant. They don't ovulate, don't produce progesterone. Mm, mm. Wow. What about inflammation? 
<laughs> Absolutely, leaky gut. The biggest when the gut blood flow is reduced, the gut membrane becomes semi porous, and you leak partially digested foods into the bloodstream and waste products and toxins. The body has an immune response, an IgG response. Once that occurs in the bloodstream, you get the release of inflammatory cytokines. Those inflammatory cytokines will race around the body, attacking other tissues. So it could attack the joints. Arthritis could attack the nervous system. MS. Alzheimer's, dementia, it could, you know, Parkinson's, autism, so much, could attack it? the lungs, could attack the thyroid, thyroiditis. Mm. What? There's over 80 different autoimmune disorders that are being diagnosed today and uh, the autoimmune disorders, are, they're simple, they, they go, well, we don't know why they happen. Well, there's only two reasons, you've either got elevated inflammation and or a decreased ability to, to counter that inflammation. So you're not producing enough of your own steroids, enough of your own cortisone. What's the first drug they put someone on who's first diagnosed with MS? Cortisone, bang, steroids, high dose of steroids because the body's not producing enough of its own it's it. and that's because the adrenals are exhausted. The adrenals produce cortisol which converts to cortisone so you're not producing enough cortisone. But if you've also got a leaky gut membrane, you've got elevated inflammation, a recipe for bloody disaster, high inflammation and decreased ability to reduce that. So something gets inflamed. I find it fascinating, Wayne, how we talk about uh, leaky gut because I talk about that all the time. I love it. Um, but hand in hand with leaky gut, which presupposes that people are um, absorbing undigested particles, food particles and mounting an immune response. Often hand in hand with leaky gut comes malabsorption. So there's a malabsorption of, uh, yes. of, of micronutrients, yes. which you think, well, macronutrients are being absorbed, why would micronutrients not be? So can you explain that little phenomenon for, for people? Why, why you don't absorb the good stuff and why you... Why, well, that, <laughs> that, good, that good stuff has got to be broken down into different size molecules and particles, and that membrane has to absorb it appropriately through that, through that membrane into the bloodstream, but it's not. It's just absorbing big chunks of it, which is not how it should be absorbed and broken down. Yeah. So you don't get the utilizable form of those nutrients. A big one at the moment uh, with the rise of iPads and screen time and iPhones and iEverything is uh, sensitivity to light. Um, people are now reading their books at night. They're no longer reading, as I like to say, a real book. Everything's done on a screen. Here we go. I should have. Go. I was going go. to bring my red glasses in as well. I'm glad you're wearing yours. Why, why didn't you get them? Oh, well, I should have. I was looking for the book. Uh, here, we go. here we go. So what does this do? You've probably seen there's a whole host of um, sites off now on you know, wearing red lenses to help you sleep at night. But we advocate wearing red lenses in the SD protocol because essentially the colour spectrum of light coming into the brain comes in from red through to blue, the colour spectrum. Red wavelength is a long, slow wavelength. Blue is a high frequency wavelength. If we put a red filter on, we're going to make all light coming in nice and calm. So it's going to dampen that light agitation, that blue light coming out of our screens. But there's now so much, much software that's available free to put on your um, iPads, phones, PCs, Macs, f.lux, free software, mm. people, f.lux.com. Download that software. It'll change the hue and the tint of your screen to red as the day progresses. The latest version of iPhone software update now has it on there. Oh, called, really? Yeah, yeah. It's called Night Shift. Ah, good. So update, update to the current version. Night Shift is on there. Wow. And it's in your settings under brightness and screen. You just set it to time of day. So it'll automatically change the hue. If you've got an Android device, it's Twilight is the free software to put on your Android device. Otherwise, on PCs and Macs, put F.Lux. And that'll... Make the as the as nighttime comes around, it gives us that glow of the red campfire. It yeah. calms our brain, it takes us back to that primitive caveman times. And and without sounding like a raving fan, even though I am, flux is great. I've noticed the difference in my eyes when I'm looking at the screen at night. Like I've recognised, you know what? I think I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Rather than with my uh, without it, it I don't get that same. Um, feeling of fatigue until I've finished for the night. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I probably should have gone to bed an hour ago. Yeah, um, different level of exhaustion. Just a, just mm. such a subtle shift, but, mm. but yeah. incredibly powerful. Um, can I ask you one more question? Only one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uterine fibroids. This isn't something that I have to deal with, but it's something it that... It might be. Really? Yeah. Not for you, but it oh, might yeah. be. I like, what, what? <laughs> I'm pretty gullible, so I was caught. I was like, where's my uterus? <laughs> You're going to tell me something I don't know. Um, for people, because a lot of our listeners are, are women, mm -hmm. um, and we could talk, you, could, you could talk about PCOS, you could talk about just give people an insight as to, again, joining the dots, because a lot of people don't see how it's all connected. Can you explain that for them? 
Okay. When you're running from a lion, you don't need to fall pregnant. So you don't ovulate regularly, so you don't produce progesterone at the amounts that you need. So then estrogen levels escape. So you, when your estrogen levels rise, estrogen feeds the endometrial lining. So it thickens that endometrial lining. It also stimulates and feeds uterine fibroids. So they will get bigger when you've got higher amounts of estrogen in circulation. So high estrogen levels drives that whole thickening of the endometrial lining. So people get heavy periods, closer together, mid-cycle spotting, clotting. So oh, we'll go, I'll give you a curette. That'll fix it. We'll scrape it all out. And they're better for a little while. Then that uterine lining regrows. Oh, next time we'll give you an endometrial ablation. We'll just burn the lining of the uterus out. That's okay for a while. It's invasive. It's okay for a while. Then that uterine lining regrows. Heavy periods. Now you've got fibroids as well because the estrogen levels are still high. Haven't fixed the hormonal imbalance. And when that occurs, oh, okay, next, okay, we'll give you a histone now. We need to cut that uterus out. And that'll fix the problem. That'll get rid of the fibroids, get rid of the heavy periods. Okay, so when we have that hysterectomy and we remove that organ the size of a fist, it's the size of a fist that sits inside that pelvic cavity. What do you think is going to fall into that space when it's removed? People develop vaginal prolapses, bladder prolapses, need bladder sling repair surgeries. All, be, all secondary and years to come following the removal of that organ to get rid of the symptom that they had, mm. but didn't get rid of the problem. Mm. Great. Great. It's, it's, heroic, it's heroic intervention. It's amazing. <laughs> I've got the periods that just keep going week on week on week, so heavy, and I've got this pressure from the fibroid. Oh, thank God they cut the uterus out. Now I don't have to deal with that anymore. Ooh. Yeah, it's a massive yep. hormone. That's a massive hormone cascade. That's the cascade of intervention. Yeah, that, yeah uh, absolutely. Yeah. Right and there. you know, it's just it's it's sad and it's frustrating because it, you look at the whole long term consequences. And if you could actually address the underlying cause, and that's why I think if we look at that primitive neurological cause and drive that goes on within the body at an autonomic level, it, it explains so many things that go wrong in our body. Absolutely. And it can, and it can turn it around. Absolutely. Well, Marcus, look, I read this book. I read the SD Protocol. It took me about a day to read, less than a day, actually. I think it was a day because I was distracted. But it's, um, it's a very, very easy read. And so for people who are thinking, oh, you know, is it going to be too much for me? It's not. It's done in really simple language. It talks about, you know, the different personalities that are inside your body, but you're kind of, you know, you're picturing it as your own family members. It's a very, very simple way to look at how your body is responding to your environment. And then Wayne, throughout the whole of the book, weaves in different strategies to actually bring about balance and bring about calm back into your life again. And, and I highly recommend the book. I think it's a, it's a fascinating, um, really engaging book, and I think it's great. We sell it in our practice. Um, we, we haven't done the course yet, Karen, Michael, or myself. We're very keen to do the course, and we will do the course. Um, but people can actually go onto the website to find... Uh, practitioners who have actually done the course, the SD Protocol course, and, and, and check that out on the SD Protocol. But do yourself a favor and get the book because if you think you're stressed, um, or even if you suspect that you're stressed, you could in fact be stuck in sympathetic dominance, and that's hugely health challenging for you long term. So, Wayne, thanks very much for joining us today on 100 Not Out. Thank you, and thank you for having me. I just forgot to say before, too, that this week we just went live on Amazon and iBook, so you can have an electronic version of that book as well. So oh, you can search great. electronic and then also get it off the website and the yeah. hard copies. So, so yeah. all over the world, because we do have a number of um, listeners in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, be it England, the States, and the rest. And what I would also recommend is uh, Wayne does a number of public talks as well. So uh, I live in regional Victoria, but he's traveling a lot. So there's always an opportunity to get along um, and see Wayne actually explain this in the flesh. Um, there's a number of eBooks available. As Wayne said, it's just gone electronic as well. All the information is at sdprotocol.com.au. Wayne, as always, like we like to wish every single one of our guests, may the rest of your life, great man, continue to be the best of your life. Thanks, guys. Have an awesome day. Thank Thanks, you. See, see you next week on the well on the wellness guys. Wow. <laughs> see, you, <laughs> <laughs> see you next there week you on One Hundred Not Out. Remember, folks, you can check us out on iTunes. Uh, give us a five star rating. That'd be great. Share the uh, One Hundred Not Out love with your friends. That allows this message to spread the world. Go to thewellnesscouch.com where you can view the entire range of wellness podcasts available. To find out more about Damien, go to damienchristoff.com and for myself, marcuspierce.com.au. Until next time, make sure you continue to make the rest of your life the best of your life. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives.
Boss the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners. These podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.